All right, here we go. It's 11.35. Still the third. But it's going by fast enough, isn't it, you guys? Seeing things, unbelievable things happening, man. Um, it's all spiritual. And somebody sent me some links where people are being forced to take shots. Where you see the county going around. and Well, it was in India. And then uh, here in America, where you see them going around to the disabled, to the handicapped, the mentally, uh, you know, that don't know any better, that don't want this done. They don't want it done, but they're getting them to do it anyhow. They're making them do it. Uh, you see county officials doing it, stuff like that. And it's disabled people. They're going around doing it to them. Um, it's shame. You know, we see this happening right now. And uh, especially when they get the police, law enforcement involved. See, the law enforcement should be considering all these things, um, what they're doing, because it's not the will of God what they're doing. And the laws that they're upholding now, they're an abomination to God. And they say, oh, we uphold the Constitution. Well, that's the laws. Even if they're perverted or not, that's what they're doing. And that's. They go at it like uh, like Nazi Germany did. Went at it. Okay. I got a few things I want to read here. Uh, First Corinthians, Ephesians, Hebrews, First Peter, First John, and one in Revelations. Let's go to uh, First Corinthians first, chapter ten. Corinthians chapter 10. Yeah, you guys. I mean, they can't make you do it. They, they, uh, what they're going to be doing it the most part is making your life very difficult. You know, and a lot of people can't understand that. And that's where, um, you need to be steadfast. This is where you're being tried. You know? Anyhow, what did I say, 10, 5 through 15, I guess. All right. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Okay, remember when they were walking through the wilderness, man, for 40 years. Now, these things were our examples. I say, you guys, when you read this, it's an example to us, like Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, the importance of, of obedience and uh, the important, like sin. What is sin? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah, the days of Noah. Um, you know, when you disobey God, when you're not obeying him and following his ways, that's sin. And this is what you get. You know, this is what you get. Now, these things were examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also did. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them. As it was written, the people sat down to eat, drink, and then they rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, 23,000. Never let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. And the serpents went through their camp. Snakes were biting them everywhere. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. This is where, you guys, your faith comes in, man. We gotta, you should, I mean, if you believe what you see, these, this is end time, uh, this was written. What we're seeing right now. Yeah. You know? Now, all these things happened unto them for an example. And they were written for our admonition. Okay. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. These, this is what I'm saying. Our, the past that's happened. These are the things that should be strengthening you now. These are the things we should have been living our lives by. Uh, 
by the example of what happened to them. You know, we see in the time past where they fell away. Even King David, when he came in, he didn't know they were moving the uh, Ark of the Covenant. They were moving that into Jerusalem on a cart. You know, and so it goes to show you how when they forget and they fall away, it goes, these are examples to let you know how important it is to know God's will. Okay. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation he also makes a way for you to escape. Yeah, that's why I'm saying sometimes these things that I see when I'm sleeping, I don't like it. I turn away and I wake up from it a lot. I wake up a lot. And that's where you don't like it. See, a lot of people will lust after these things because they're still of the world. Okay, and if you're still cleaving to this world, these kind of things will uh, cause your flesh to lust after it. That's why it says you got to die to this thing. Be born again. Not of flesh, but of the spirit. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. Okay, it goes on, you know, it says the cup of blessing, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread, which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrificed idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not have you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? See, that's where people are trying to do, you know, do two things. Yeah, if you're messing with this world, remember Satan's prince of it. Satan's prince of this world. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, 13 through 30. Ephesians, chapter 4, 13, okay, here we go, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every word of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive you. Okay, this is why you guys, we like to read out of the scripture. And yes, we'll talk a little bit, but I like to read more out of the scripture because this is what you need to hear. Okay, today you go into these churches and you hear a lot of them. I'll read a verse or two and then do a whole lot of them talking. And the word is, it's Holy Spirit inspired, and that's what you need to be living your life by. Okay, This is the New Testament, by the way, and even the Old Testament. Remember, God and the Father, Jesus and the Father are one. Okay, And he's not, he didn't come here to do away with the Old Testament, but to fulfill it. And he made a new covenant with us by his blood. Otherwise, none of us would make it. You know? Speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body joined together 
and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. You hear, you, you see, you guys have probably heard a lot of people just say stuff like they're, they can, they're, um, they're sinning all the time, and they still think they're all right. I meet people that say, oh, I don't read all the time. I don't need to read the word because I'm a good man. And that's and I believe and that's all I need. Jesus, you know, he clearly said, man, if you don't, if you, those that hear his testimonies, his, his sayings and does them. Now, if you don't know what's in the scripture, how are you going to do them? How are you going to pick up your cross and follow Christ and the world? Like you can't. And a lot of them are and they just don't know it. And it, you know, hopefully, we hope some of those people. There's nothing we could say to them. I've tried, but hopefully, when they're like, when they find that they're left behind. Hopefully, they'll have what it takes to, because they're coming their own way. They're not coming through Christ. They're not accepting what Christ did, or they're 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 wanting to take what they want and throw the rest out, and that's not going to work. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated. From the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt according to this deceitful of lust. You see what I'm saying? And people don't realize the importance of this. And I've seen it where Cynthia one time went to go witness with the pastor, giving him stuff that was in scriptures, and the guy was looking at her like, couldn't understand her. You know? They don't even understand the meaning of the parable of the seeds because they don't read it. You know? Listen, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put up, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. See the old man, when I was quickening with Christ, that old man, he, he's dead. That's gone. Now I'm a new man in Christ, following Christ. That's the new man. When you're following Christ, let me tell you something, man. You don't look here and you don't look there. You keep your head steadfast, straight on him. And he's Because he is my redemption, my savior, my Lord. He's my everything. Therefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. You hear that? Oh, it says sin not. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that steal, steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good that he may have to give to them that need it. And uh, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouths. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where you are sealed until the day of redemption. Excuse me. Uh, here we are at uh, Hebrews 9 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serving the living God. You know what I'm saying? When you're hearing people that say, oh, they sit every time, everybody always does, you know? That's why I'm saying, with the blood of Christ being on you, how much more should that purge your conscience? See, that's what we didn't have before. If 
sacrifice Christ as the final sacrifice. We didn't have that before. Now, with the blood of Christ, the Holy Spirit abiding in us, that purge people's conscience, you know, it's, unless they love the darkness, they prefer, you know, they, they got the spirit of the world. Okay, now let's go to, uh, let's go to First Peter, chapter 1, 2 through 4. First Peter chapter one, one through four, the elect to the foreknowledge of God, the father through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. which According to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Okay, you guys? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Okay, God bless you guys, man. Love each and every one of you. I hope and pray you guys are staying strong out there. And, uh, you know, don't argue or debate with these people, man. If these people are locked, if their conscience is dead and they want to keep doing sinning, that is what they're going to do. You know, just move on, you know. And, uh, pray for them, but move on. God bless you guys. Love you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.